Did you know that you could be taking a supplement that is actually beneficial for your specific body chemistry, but if you're taking it at the wrong time, you can be doing more harm than good. In this video, I'm going to help you understand some supplements that you should be avoiding at night. I think this is going to freak you out a little bit. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So it was Dr. Emmanuel Urbisi who helped us understand that the body has this natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. So during the day at the cellular level, the body should be in what's called a catabolic state. And this happens during the daytime, and this is where the body's really good at making energy and also like breaking down tissue so that they can be rebuilt and renewed. And that's an important part of the body rebuilding and renewing itself. That breakdown phase is important. And then at night, at the cellular level, the body moves into what's called an anabolic state. And this is what happens at night and when we're resting and sleeping. And this is where the body's very good at rebuilding and repairing. So you can see that both of these states are appropriate. We want both of these things to happen. The problem is that a lot of people will get stuck in one of these states most of the time. And they're not switching back and forth from day to night like they should. And this can create a wide variety of health issues. So when we're looking at supplements, it can be important to understand the effect that that supplement is having on the body. We really should not be using supplements as a remedy. Hey, take this because you have this symptom. Because most symptoms can have a variety of underlying causes. There's not just one underlying cause that creates the same symptom for every person. So let's look at some of these supplements. And let's start with omega-3s because omega-3s are very popular and everybody's like, ah, it's anti-inflammatory. You got to pile in all the omega-3s and everybody wants you to take omega-3s and fatty acids and fish oils and flaxseed oil. And the reality is that omega-3s are not as beneficial to everyone as people think. In the description below this video, we'll put a link to our video on who should not be using omega-3s. But what's important to understand about omega-3s is that these are pro-catabolic. So they're going to push a person more into this catabolic state. So if someone's stuck in this anabolic state most of the time and they start taking omega-3s, well that could turn their whole world around. They could really improve that imbalance and help the body move from that catabolic state during the day and into the anabolic state at night. And more importantly, they can keep the body from being stuck in this anabolic state where it's never really breaking down tissues to get rid of junk and allow it to be rebuilt. This is important to move into both of these states. So omega-3s can be really beneficial because they're very pro-catabolic if a person is stuck in this state. The reality is though, if you're taking your omega-3s at night, you're pushing your body out of that natural nighttime state where it should be during the night. So you're pushing your body out of that ability to rebuild, repair, and rest in that nighttime state. So if omega-3s are actually appropriate for you, then you want to take them in the morning or in the afternoon around lunchtime. But later than that, you're going to be working against your body's natural circadian rhythm. And if you're leaning on the insulin resistance side, it's important to understand that omega-3s actually can push a person more insulin resistant. So if that's your situation, be sure to check out that video in the link in the description to learn more about omega-3s. Okay, vitamin A can be really good for like vision and reproduction and stuff, but again, pro-catabolic. So this is something we want to take in the morning or the afternoon and we want to avoid at night to work with our body instead of against it. Okay, this one is really going to ruffle some feathers. Magnesium, oh no, pro-catabolic. It's one of the most pro-catabolic minerals that there are. This is a huge mistake that so many people make because everybody tells us, oh, magnesium is this relaxing mineral, so you should take it at night so you can relax and sleep. Ah. Well, the reality is that you're pushing your body out of that sleep state when you're taking magnesium at night. And the problem is that there's more than one underlying cause for insomnia. Some people can't sleep 
because they're stuck in this catabolic state all the time. So at the cellular level, their body is awake at night, like, let's do this, come on, let's go. But that's not the only cause of insomnia. There's a lot of people who deal with insomnia for other reasons, like low mineral levels, and maybe they're too stuck in this anabolic state, and even though they're stuck in that sleep time state, that can affect how we process blood sugar, and it's creating blood sugar crashes and other problems that are reducing their ability to sleep. So they could take magnesium and move themselves out of this imbalance a little bit, but still be deep enough in an anabolic state where they can sleep and it actually helps them improve their sleep. But if they took this magnesium earlier in the day, they could be giving their body all these things to correct this imbalance, but they will be doing at a time of the day that works with their body's natural circadian rhythm. So they would be magnifying the benefits they're getting from this magnesium by just taking it during the day, taking it in the morning instead of at night. Now, to understand this further, we'll put a link in the description below for stop taking magnesium for sleep, and we dig a lot deeper into that. But it's important to understand that the benefits of magnesium can be magnified greatly when you take it during the right time of the day. B12, also very pro-catabolic. And this can be really beneficial, helping us create energy, and it can even help us burn fat. I don't want you to view it as a fat-burning supplement. I know people really want that to exist, and a lot of times it just doesn't. It just really depends on working with your body's chemistry to help your body burn fat better. But this can be a beneficial supplement in that direction. Uh, L-phenylalanine is also pro-catabolic, and so is tyrosine, and this can kind of be a precursor to tyrosine. The body can kind of make tyrosine if it has this L-phenylalanine, but there's a lot of studies that show L-phenylalanine can be very beneficial for depression, and I'll put some links in the description below, and you can also check out our video on the nutrition side of depression if you want to learn more about that, but it can be important to take this in the morning or in the afternoon. And taurine, a lot of people use this to lower blood pressure. But again, very pro-catabolic, something that we want to take during the day. So all of these supplements can be beneficial for some people. You can see they're not appropriate for everybody. If somebody had high blood pressure and they're going to take L-phenylalanine, well, they're going to magnify that problem. If somebody's blood pressure was already too low and maybe that's why they couldn't sleep because they didn't have enough minerals and enough nutrients in the system, well, taking taurine is going to make that much worse. So we really want to understand how to look at our body chemistry and then use those supplements at the right time of the day. If you want to learn more how to do that, chapter 17 of my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, goes through a lot more supplements and helps you understand the benefits that they can create as well as the right timing to use those. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free. And just because I know there's going to be someone in the comments right now saying, oh, I've been using magnesium before bed for 35 years. And just know that it's important to understand why that might be benefiting you. And if you can understand that, then you might be able to adjust the timing and improve even more health issues as well. But the most important thing when you're looking at these types of supplements is to know, are you leaning too far in one of these directions? If you're balanced, these might work great. But if you're already leaning too far on this catabolic side, any of these supplements may be magnifying health issues for you specifically. They may help your neighbor, but they might be causing problems for you. So jump over right now and check out our video on Is My Circadian Rhythm Off? so you can understand things that you can look at to figure out if you're maybe leaning too far in one direction or the other. I can't wait to hear about your results.